So here we are in Sigmaplot version 13, and we have some data already entered into our data sheet in notebook number 1. This data has been used in a previous tutorial. We've got some x-axis data here, labelled as x-axis, which is from 0 through to 4. And let's just, for the sake of argument, say this is seconds, so it's time in seconds. And then we've got some corresponding data here, representing four replicants at time 0, four replicants at time 1, etc., down to the four replicants at time 5. In addition, though, now we've got a second set of data over here, and these are four more replicants in a different treatment group. So this might be a cell culture experiment where we've exposed two different drugs to a, to a cell. So these are an N of four of a separate group, and you can see we've got four replicants also up to the same time points. And we want to plot this as a line graph, and we want to compare these two sets of data. So we need to create a graph. So we go to Create Graph. We know we want to create a line graph, but we also want to have data points. So we're going to choose on the line scatter combination graph and have a look at the options available to us. Well, we have two data sets, so none of the options showing a single data line are going to be applicable for us. So we can ignore the first two. The third one is a multiple straight line with scatter, but there are no error bars. We want to show some variance, so we want to show, for instance, standard deviation. So in the case of this one, it's the sixth one along here, multiple line and scatter with error bars. So we click on this. This brings up the graph creation box, and we want to choose where our symbols are going to come from. We are not going to want to average columns, because columns, in this case, don't represent groups. It is rows that represent groups. So we make sure we choose row means. We want to show standard deviation, so we leave that as it is and we click on Next. We want to have one x-axis value data set with many y replicates, so we click on Next. Our data set from the x-axis comes from column number one, so we can check, select this from the drop-down box as column one. It then asks us where the start of data set one comes from, and we know this comes from the second column and the end of dataset 1 comes from the fifth column. It wants to know where dataset 2 comes from. We've got a gap at, at column 6 just to make life a bit easier to show it on the screen. So we're going to choose column 7 as the start of dataset 2 and column 10 in this case as the end of dataset 2. If we were to have more datasets we could continue selecting multiple datasets until we have completed it, but since we only have two datasets we will say finish and it'll create our graph. You can see it's created the standard sigma plot graph with a box around it and a floating legend. In this case, the floating legend is quite useful because we can see what we've selected. So let's just zoom in a little bit and have a look at this graph. It's plotted the two data sets on the same axis and the same scale, which is convenient for comparison. And it's selected a different point fill for each of the data set. For instance, the black circles are for data set 1 and the open circles for data set 2. If we scroll down a little bit here, you can see this is x-axis time versus zd, and this one's x-axis time versus ad. That's a rather confusing title, so we can double-click on each of these, and in the legend text we can change this by pressing the edit button and call this group A, for instance, and then close that. And we can edit the second one in the same way by double-clicking, choosing the second group, and editing this group and calling this Group B. When you close this window now, you can see Group A and Group B, and if we wanted to, we could have this little box floating in the corner of our graph rather than out on its own. In the same way we've done previously, we can double-click on any of the X and Y data sets and re-label these. And if we want to, we can rescale the axis to fit our data sets a little bit better. So for instance, I'm going to double click on the axis here and change it to go from minus 0.1 up to 4.1. And I'm going to hide the walls. 
and I'm happy with that as a data as a graph. We can just zoom out to have a little look at that in full. And I'm just going to hide the title because I don't need the title. So that's a very quick way of plotting a graph that compares two sets of data. These are called group data and it's working out the average of the group and then comparing two groups together on the same graph. We chose to create a line scatter graph but we could have just as easily selected the bar graph and chosen groups in the same way.